Hey everybody, it's Christina with Destin Journey. Today I'm going to explain all of the free dining options on MCL ships. If you like videos about cruising, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell below so you're notified as I post new content. Now let's get started. after having been on I think it was five Norwegian ships is the dining is pretty consistent fleet-wide so I'm gonna basically go over for all of the ships and even though most recently we were on the Norwegian epic and the reason I want to do this video in particular is because we decided on our last cruise to purchase the specialty dining package. So we tried three of the specialty dining restaurants. I'm gonna go over in another video and review the restaurants that we dined at in the specialty package, but also want to make sure that you have a complete understanding of what is included with your cruise as far as dining to be able to make that determination if you wanna invest in a dining package or uh, choose it as one of your perks, which I can explain later as well. So let me begin by explaining, if you don't already know, that Norwegian Cruise Line, different from many other cruise lines, even though a lot are, are starting to jump on board, uh, has freestyle dining. Freestyle dining is basically, um, they're separating themselves from the cruise lines that have uh, dining times. So I know when I was on a Royal Caribbean cruise, it was probably about 20 years ago. And we had to choose if we wanted to have dinner either at five or six or eight. And I know that we chose the later time slot just because we didn't know how late we'd be at port stops or what else we would have going on. Freestyle, it's great because all of their included dining rooms or main dining rooms, as you may want to call it, uh, you can just show up. You can show up with your group. And even if there's a group of eight or ten, then you just walk up, you make tell them you have eight or 10. Sometimes with larger groups, there's a little bit of a wait, but we found for the most part that with the freestyle, we got in right away. We were usually given really great service and you know we're out within an hour. Uh, you know Sometimes it was busier than others, but of course that's to be expected. So I don't honestly find any issue. I hear that people have different opinions both ways between freestyle and having scheduled dining, but I don't find any negative at all to the freestyle option. It's really, really nice. And especially if you have uh, show tickets and you want to work around that, if you end up eating a late lunch because, you know, you had breakfast, you weren't hungry for lunch, you end up eating a late lunch and you're not hungry. For me, when I'm on vacation, I like to schedule as least as possible. I get that sometimes you're going to schedule excursions and you have to schedule shows, um, that sort of thing. I just want to relax and go with the flow. Let me just start with the main dining rooms. Now on the Epic in particular, there is our only two main dining rooms. Now, I think with many of the other ships, especially the mega ships, there are three. So I will explain really quickly. Uh, first is taste. Taste is has been at all of the on all of the ships that we have been on thus far. And then they typically would have also savor, which is very similar. But the menus are identical. Say on the on uh, the escape or the getaway. Uh, you walk up, savers on one side, tasters on the other. There's the mix bar in between, so you can wait, have a drink, or meet your friends there. It works out really nice. And basically, we would just choose whichever side didn't seem to have a line or seemed easier to get to. Uh, or one, if we didn't have it yet on our cruise, then we'd say, oh, hey, let's go choose this one because we haven't been at that one yet. So that's basically how we did it. But the menus are identical. Every once in a while, of course, you're going to have something that maybe just isn't your favorite. But for the most part, we found that the quality was amazing. So let me just show you some of that and some of our experiences at Taste. First from the lunch menu is the Vietnamese pho and Cajun shrimp salad. One of the entree choices is a Philly cheesesteak with American cheese and French fries and a grouper sandwich with caramelized onions and a yummy pretzel bun. 
Uh, an appetizer choice is salmon tartare that is served with baguettes. That was excellent. And the Pacific Hake, which is a fish. Not sure if I'm saying it right, but it was excellent. And also the bacon bourbon glazed chicken. As an appetizer choice are the seared scallops with a roasted red pepper sauce. And my favorite night of the week, usually towards the end of the week, is prime rib night. So good and served with horseradish if you'd like it. This is their version of a bruschetta on a baguette and the mozzarella and basil stuffed chicken. Finally, this is one of the desserts called the Strawberry Napoleon. We were absolutely addicted to this and couldn't get enough. I don't know what it was about it, but it was excellent and not to be missed. Now the way the menus are set up at Taste and Savor are the left hand side has salads and appetizers to the top. Underneath they have a daily assortment of entrees and these remain the same for the duration of your cruise. So basically what we liked about that is if there wasn't anything we wanted on the right side of the menu, so the other side had all the specialty things, the things that changed every single day. And then the bottom I believe was like wine selections. So we saved the bottom left hand side because we knew that it was available every single day. We saved items on that side on days for when there maybe wasn't one of the daily options on the right that we were interested in. So that's really nice because you kind of know what your backup plan is, um, you know, in case there's something you don't like. Now I eat so many different foods. I'm very open-minded. My husband, not so much. So that side menu works really, really great for him because it seems to have more standard items that everybody likes, like a New York strip. You also need to know that they don't post any of their menus online. So I'm gonna make sure that I post or link to all of the menus because we, I did take photos each day of the menus and they post them daily. So Wednesday morning, they'll show what's for breakfast at the taste or savor dining room. And then once breakfast is over, then they'll post what is for lunch. Again, when lunch is over and they're closed for lunch, they will post what is for dinner. So that's the soonest you'll be able to plan and see, you know, if there's something that you're gonna want there. So that's taste and savor. This was our one of our experiences at taste, but maybe I should explain first. Uh, the Manhattan Room is the third, and the Manhattan Room has been on every Norwegian ship that I've been on thus far, and the Manhattan Room is different from the other two because, well, number one, it's a lot larger, but they have live entertainment, and also they have a dress code, and this is very important because they adhere to it. So my husband and I thought we remembered that there was a dress code. We weren't quite sure, and I thought, I bet it's not that stiff. It should probably be fine. He wore dress shorts. Um, I don't remember what I wore, but we did also find out that women can wear basically anything. Um, but as we got to the front of the line, they apologized. We'd love to seat you, but he will have to be in long pants. So for any men that are planning to go to the Manhattan room, uh, make sure you have on pants because they're strict. And I, it can even be jeans. It just can't be shorts. So where are we eating right now? Taste. And why is that? Because you didn't wear pants. I wore shorts, and right. They, and they, they turned us and away. They, they absolutely do have a dress code at the Manhattan Room. Be aware. Same menu at Taste, so we came here. It's kind of noisy and airy at this one, um, but we typically like Taste, so uh, we're fine. Yeah, I'm excited to eat my food. Very important to remember, we saw so many men getting turned away every day if we were anywhere near the Manhattan Room. We would see, oh, really? You didn't wear them? You know, whatever. You didn't bring any pants? With the Manhattan Room, this is going to be the same exact menu that you are gonna find at Taste and Savor. Those are the three main dining rooms. Now there's still additional free dining. There is O'Sheehan's. Now O'Sheehan's is probably supposed to mimic like an Irish bar and grill. Uh, there's video games up there, pool tables. Now on the Epic, they actually had a true to size bowling alley. Uh, this unique about Oceans, number one, is they're open 24 hours. This is really, really great because you always know, even if you, maybe you skip dinner because you have other stuff going on or you, you know, you weren't hungry from lunch and you skipped and all of a sudden it's 10, 11, who knows, you're hungry. 
you always know Shein's is going to be open. Now they have more of a limited menu, but again, we found that the food was really good. They're kind of known for their wings. They do have very, very good chicken wing. A bunch of different sauces to choose from. I believe you purchase them in uh, quantities of six. Really good, but they have a couple different types of hot dogs usually. Now those menus aren't uh, completely standardized over uh, the entire Norwegian fleet. We saw a little bit of differences. And another thing to note is on the Bliss that we were on recently, they actually changed the name to The Local. I don't know why. I like when the names are consistent because then I know exactly what type of place it is, but it's called The Local. So I don't know if that's what they're gonna be doing going forward, but on all of the other ships and going back, it's called Oceans. And that, and they have really good desserts. We actually, a couple times on our last cruise, went just later for dessert because we didn't like the dessert options at the main dining room. So we thought, well, we're kind of full because you know, you're always over, overeating and sometimes we will skip dessert and then later on before bed we will stop at Oceans and grab a cheesecake and an apple pie a la mode because those are two things that they seem to always have on the menu there that we really like so something to keep in mind and it's very central it's right above the atrium so if you want to watch any of the atrium shows you can get a seat overlooking that and uh, it's really convenient. Moving on. Now, of course, on every cruise, every cruise line, there's always buffets. And what is great about Norwegian cruise line buffets, first of all, the quality is top notch. I'm not a buffet fan. I, you will never catch me eating at a buffet except for on a cruise. And the reason is, number one, when we're with our whole family, it just makes things easier. And sometimes we just wanna get off the ship because we're at port and so it's just easier to go upstairs 15th floor usually 15th deck and uh everybody grabs what they want and we're done and out of there so overall when it comes to the included dining is amazing it is very high quality and you do not need to purchase an upgraded dining package now sometimes when you book you get to pick a perk Sometimes you get to pick two perks. Sometimes you get to pick all perks. Uh, sometimes the dining package is part of it. If you're interested in trying the other restaurants, go for it. But don't feel as though you have to, to enjoy your dining because sometimes cruisers feel like they're getting nickel and dimed because everything's extra. And just because they have extra offerings doesn't mean you need to purchase them. Give the free dining a shot. It's not like the all-inclusive resorts I've been to in Mexico where you're eat to eat and you're never really wowed by the experience. The decor, the ambiance, and the food quality really hit the mark. If you'd like to see my follow-up video on the specialty dining for Norwegian Cruise Line, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell below so you're notified right when I post it. Also, please post any of your free dining questions below so I can answer anything I may have missed. On a side note, I am new to vlogging and appreciate the feedback and suggestions, so please share your thoughts below. New ventures are so difficult, so I can always use the encouragement. Thank you for joining me on my destined journey. I truly appreciate your support, and remember to always live your own destined journey. See you next time.